The popularity of Redis has been on the rise for years now, but given the explosion of interest in vector data and the fact that Redis supports vector similarity search, I have a feeling that Redis is about to become even more popular. In this video, we're going to dive into the vector similarity search capabilities of Redis. I'm going to show you how to create schemas and to load vector data into the database. You can store vector data either in a Redis hash or as a JSON object. I'm going to cover both. Then I'm going to cover vector similarity search syntax. I'll show you how to fetch the data either from a hash or from JSON and how you deal with multidimensional vector data. Finally, I'm going to show you how you pass this data to a large language model with Langchain, and this gives you everything you need to build custom chains and agents from scratch. The way vector similarity search works in Redis is similar to how it works in other vector databases. A search query is transformed into a vector embedding and Redis then uses a distance metric to measure the similarity between vectors and fetches and returns the ones that are closest in distance. This ensures that the returned items are semantically similar to the search query. Two of the most prominent use cases of vector similarity search in Redis are recommendation systems and personalization. E-commerce companies are building hybrid vector search systems that are a combination of traditional keyword search and vector search. This combination is a powerful tool for improving the search experience for customers browsing for products. Personalization is another use case that is going to benefit from the vector similarity search features of Redis, in particular using Redis both for vector storage and for holding customer features used for contextualizing the customer interaction. In order to be able to build systems like this on Redis, we need to be able to do vector similarity search efficiently, which is what we're going to dive into next. I'm going to share the code used and the data below the video. The code will be in a Colab notebook that you can use as a reference guide in future work. If you want to follow along for this, make sure you subscribe. Let's go. We're now going to have a look at how we load vector data into Redis and create indexes without using Langchain. This is going to be useful when you want to build custom retrievers for language models. Here we have our connection URL that allows us to connect to Redis Cloud, both through Langchain and through Redis Pi. If we ping it, we can see we have a connection. And then we extract the Amazon review data that we've been using several times in earlier videos. So here I've extracted the overall review score, a review ID, a review text, a summary of the review, and a reviewer ID. Then I'm going to use the sentence transformer library. I'm going to use the hogging face embeddings to create the vector embeddings. Then I'm going to create lists of the review texts and the summary. And I'm going to use the hogging face embedding to create lists of vector embeddings, both for the review text and the summary. If we have a look at the texts, we can see it's just a list of all the review texts. And if we have a look at the variable vectors, we can see we have a list of vector embeddings. And it's important to note the dimension of these individual vectors. It's 768. We're going to need that. In the last Redis video, we already added some data to the database through Langchain. And if you use r.keys, we can see that data. We have two indexes, review IDX and review IDX meta. So this data was added through Langchain. And what we want to do in this video is we want to add the data without using Langchain through Redis Pi directly. And we want to create the indexes as well through Redis Pi. To do that, we're going to use the Redis search module. We're going to import vector field. We're going to import text field and numeric field. We're going to use these fields to define a schema, which in turn is going to be used to define the index. We're also going to import index definition and index type, which is also going to be used to define the Redis index. We're also going to define a Redis pipeline that allows us to buffer individual Redis commands and execute them as a group. This is useful when you need to load lots of data to the Redis database. So let's define the schema. The schema is basically just a tuple of fields. We have three text fields, overall, review text, and summary. And then we have one vector field that we're going to call vector. 
This vector field allows us to do vector similarity queries using the Redis search module. And you can see that after the field name vector, I've specified the vector indexing method. You can either choose a flat index or HNSW. HNSW is short for Hierarchical Navigable Small World. And you want to go with HNSW if you prefer speed over recall, that is, if you prefer speed over the quality of the results. You can also see that I've included the dimension in the schema, which is 768 in our case. We also need to specify a distance metric. In this case, I'm using cosine. This could also have been the Euclidean distance or the inner product. So this defines the schema. And now we can actually go ahead and define the index. To define an index, we need a prefix. And I'm going to choose doc colon review idx hash, since the first index we're going to be creating is a hash index. Then we use the schema we just created to set the fields. And we use the index definition that we imported to set the prefix and the index type, in this case, a hash index. If we execute this, we get an index. Next, we need to upload some data. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to loop through the reviews, which is the data frame that we transformed into a dictionary. Then I'm going to set the key that we want to store in Redis equal to the prefix plus the review ID. I'm going to use the review dictionaries to form the records, and then I'm going to add an extra key with the vector, the embedding. Note that I'm transforming the vectors into bytes, as this is necessary when we store the data in a hash format. And then we use hsat and the pipeline to store these hashes in bulk. If we run ft.list, we see that the new index has been created, review idx hashed. We can see that the keys have been uploaded to the database. And we can fetch one of the records using hgetall, using the keys. And here we see a record. So this was a hash index. This is what Langchain is doing under the hood. We can also store vector data in JSON format. The procedure is very similar when you want to store vector data in JSON format, but there are a few differences. Here I'm creating a prefix like I did before, now underscore JSON instead of underscore hash. And when I define the schema, I'm going to use JSON path syntax. When defining the individual fields in the schema, I'm using a dollar sign to refer to a top level element in a JSON structure. The asName argument creates an alias for the JSON fields that we can use when we search for specific data. So we can create this index like we did before using index definition. And then we load the data looping through the reviews using the pipeline, same as what we did with the hashes. The only difference is that here we can save the vectors directly. We don't have to transform them into bytes because we're storing this as JSON objects. If we execute ft.list, we can see we have the new index review idx JSON. And we can see that we also added the new keys to the database. If we want to fetch a record, we can't use hget. It's not a hash. We use .json.get and then the key. And then we add the dollar sign. And note that the vector is actually in a readable format in this case. Redis also allows you to store multiple numeric arrays as a vector. This can be useful if you have two vector embeddings representing the same object. To see this, let's create a new schema. This time we call it review idx underscore json underscore multi because it's multi dimensional. Here we have almost the same notation as we did with the JSON object with one vector, except for the vector field, where we here specify the JSON path using square brackets and an asterisk. 
we upload the data in the same way we did before. Note that the key containing the vector field is called vectors, and it's two-dimensional. It contains the vectors and the summary vectors. And then we just create the index using the schema we just defined, and this is the exact same as before. And again, checking the keys to see if we uploaded the data correctly. And here we have review IDX JSON multi. Let's say we wanted to fetch the two vectors of an individual record. We can do that using .json.get and the individual key, and then using JSON path to fetch the element we want to fetch, in this case, vectors. We just need to, to import path in order to be able to do this. So we'll import this from redis.commands.json.path. And then we can fetch the two vectors. Next up, let's see how we do vector similarity search in Redis. The way we do vector similarity search in Redis is that we first formulate the k nearest neighbor query, which is the search logic. And here, the first part of the query logic is knn and then the number 5, which is the number of requested results. Then we use the add symbol to make a reference to the field we want to query. In this case, we're using the alias we created called vector. Then we are using the dollar sign to indicate that we are adding the search query as a parameter to the vector similarity search. And finally, we're specifying a distance name called vector score that we can use for sorting the results. Then we formulate a query string. In this case, it's just going to be the phrase very uncomfortable. And we embed this string. And then we add this to a dictionary where the key is vicparam, the same name as we used when we formulated the query logic. I note that the search query we're passing as a parameter needs to be in a blob format with a byte size that matches the size of the stored vectors. And once we have the query stored in a dictionary in the right format, we can use the RedisPy instance with the index name to do a vector similarity search by passing the vector similarity query and the query parameters as inputs. So let's try to run this in the notebook and see what we get. Let's have a look at the results. And here we have the five records where the review or the summary is closest in distance to the query string when we define the distance using cosine similarity. We can, of course, also filter results, and that's called a hybrid vector similarity search. So let's say we only want to fetch the reviews that has an overall score of three. And to do this, we're going to replace the asterisk we had before the arrow in the query syntax with a filter. So we want add overall colon three to get all the reviews with a score of three. So let's try to run this. And note I'm querying a different index this time, the hashed index. And here we have the top five results with an overall score rating of three. Being able to do vector similarity search in Redis without using LangChain comes in very handy when you want to build custom retrievers for the language models. So let's have a look at how we can use LangChain to pass this data to a language model. I'm going to use GPT-4, so I'm just going to load the OpenAI API key, and then I'm going to import the needed LangChain libraries. So I'm going to use a prompt template. I need chat OpenAI because GPT-4 is a chat model. And in the first example I'm giving, I'm going to use retrieval QA. And in the second example I'm giving, I'm going to use load summarize chain. 
we already have the data in Redis and we have the indexes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to Redis from Langchain. And the way we do that is to use the from existing index method. And in this case, we're using Redis Cloud. So we need to pass the index name and we need to pass the embeddings and the URL to connect to Redis Cloud. Then I'm going to use Retrieval QA, the vector store, and the language model, in this case, GPT-4, to define the chain that allows us to ask questions about the review data. And now I can ask GPT-4 to have a look at the reviews and tell us what we can improve. And here we have the output from GPT-4 with a nice summary of the reviews and some specific recommendations on what we can improve. And if you want this in a nicer format, just print the results. In the next example, I'm going to show you how you do the vector similarity search directly in Redis and then pass that data to GPT-4 through Langchain. First, I'm going to import document from document loaders. And then I'm going to do the vector similarity search again on the hashed index. In order to pass the vector similarity search results to Langchain, we need to transform the results into documents using the document utility we just imported. So I'm going to loop through the vector similarity results. Then I'm going to create a string out of the text in each record and create a document out of that string. And now I have the data in the right format as documents that I can pass to the language model through load summarize chain. And here I'm simply using load summarize chain to ask GPT-4 to summarize the reviews. So this is how we can pass data that we get from a direct vector similarity search to a language model through Langchain. All right, that's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.